From Bell Direct, good morning to you, Julia. What did you make of the market update from Elbert Elders, um, particularly uh, the, the news that they want to sell the rural services arm? Brooke, this is a big announcement by Elders and it's a game changer for the business. We know that one of the concerns that the market has with Elders is that it's probably barely operating within our projected balance sheet covenants. So it does look like it is looking at a, a uh, uh, renegotiations with its lenders. Also, it's been focusing in on costs as well as debt reductions, and that's ongoing. We're seeing some cost initiatives announced for FY13 uh, previously, and that accounted for around about $9 million worth of savings. And of course, a decision to exit its automotive business, the Futurist business, would have left it as a pure rural services play. But the announcement today that it's looking to sell off its rural services business means it's pretty much selling off all its business. It's automotive businesses for sale, its forestry assets aren't really contributing to earnings and the rural services is the majority of its business and this is the business that provides marketing as well as financial services to its farmers. So all up it looks like elders is selling off its business in parts. Of course, we know that this is a stock that's been driven by takeover speculation, that Rural Co. will make a takeover bid for the business. We know that Rural Co. owns a 12.04% stake, and that's really been the key driver of the business, because in key growing uh, areas for, uh, for elders, we have seen weaker conditions being forecast. So the stock is up by 13% in the last quarter, but that's being driven by expectations. We'll see a takeover offer coming through from Rural Co. So this is a key for uh, this is a key for elder shareholders. The fact that we are seeing pretty much all of its business looking to be on the chopping block, and whether we are going to see a takeover offer formally coming through from Rulco. Julia, yet to come online again. The company with a quarterly update uh, for you. What's going to be front and centre? Carson, uh, we've seen Sanfire coming out with this quarterly update, and this is a stock that's done well in the last quarter. The stock's up by 20% compared to copper prices, which is up by about 3% in that same period, and the material space, which is up by around about 9%. So it has been underperforming, and this is a company that is highly leveraged to copper prices. That's because it's unhedged, and also there's less precious metal credits flowing through. So if we have a look at the copper market and copper projects, we know that there's been some delays as well as some cancellations in some key copper projects and if we have a look at the majors BHP and Rio Tinto we know that BHP has put on hold the Olympic Dam expansion and Rio Tinto has had been has been having problems with the Mongolian uh, government in its copper projects there where it, the Mongolian government wants to take a 51% stake instead of a 34% stake in the project over there. In contrast, if we have a look at Sandfly, its key project is the Degrissa project, and that is due for completion in the current financial year. We are expecting to see a ramp up to a rate of 77,000 uh, 77, tons of copper uh, by, uh, by the first quarter of 2013. And at the moment, that project not only looks like it's on track and on budget, but perhaps ahead of schedule as well. So Sanfire Resources, it's doing well. This is a key year. It is highly leveraged to copper prices, though. If we have a look at the lead from copper on Friday, we did see copper prices flat in New York and up by 0.1% in London. Anything else you're expecting across the market um, today in terms of market moving news? Brooke, I think it's going to be an unusually quiet Monday, and that's because of the weather problems that we are seeing in New York at the moment. So we'll probably see the U.S. session being impacted tonight, and that means slow trading in Asia today. If we have a look at the Australian share market, we'll probably be playing a little bit of positive catch-up, and that's because the Australian market does look like it's underperformed. We did see the Apple result coming out after hours on uh, Friday, so the Australia on um, Thursday. So we did see the Australian market having a chance to react to that, while the U.S. market uh, still saw that reaction flowing. Through on Friday and off Apple being one of the big the biggest stock listed in the US of course had a big reaction in terms of individual stocks we'll see some quarterly production reports coming through Bidel resources that's going to be an interesting one BDR because that's been one of the best performers on the Australian share market in the last 52 weeks we'll also be watching uh, panoramic resources which comes out with the quarterly report and evolution mining and of course in terms of AGMs we'll be watching Bendigo and Adelaide Bank at 11 a.m. Adelaide time